Good morning, traders. I'm Michael Sabo, Senior Market Strategist with RJO Futures here on Monday, uh, March 24th, with some commentary here in the energy market. So let's get started here. Uh, May crude prices just a touch firmer. We're up about 34 cents right now, trading around 99.80. We did cross up above the $100 area, but kind of quickly came back under, and we're just kind of hovering underneath this level. Uh, Brent's also a touch firmer at around 107.26. It's also up about 34 cents on the day. So more of a quiet day here right now uh, so far in the oil taking a look at nat gas off just a touch down about two cents and the complex were a little bit firmer uh, we have our bob up about two cents it heats up about uh, three quarters of a cent so overall just a slightly uh, firmer tone now you know interesting here to note you know crude prices here which obviously we've seen kind of sell off here we've gone through a period of consolidation Recently here, uh, tail end of last week, we did see crude prices kind of firming up here just a touch. Now, market seems to be shaking off here. Some of the weak data coming out of China. They had some weak manufacturing uh, numbers coming out of there. But uh, there has been some talk of some potential stimulus there in China, uh, which is uh, kind of very interesting. Also, some of the Chinese, uh, the Chinese Central Bank, there's been some uh, talk of them possibly loosening up some of the lending standards there for property uh, developers. So... You know, interesting, we could start to see the, the makings of a bubble. Certainly, we know that there's been some slowdown there, hence the reason why they're talking about some additional uh, uh, possible stimulus measures there. So it's kind of keeping oil prices here, just a, a hint of an underlying uh, firmness there in the market. We also have G7 meeting going on in the Netherlands, uh, talking main focus there, it, what's going on in Crimea, uh, Crimea and the buildup of, of Russian troops there on the Ukrainian border. You know, here's what I think is going to happen there. I, I don't think that you're going to see, you know, Russia really take any action against Ukraine. Um, I think it's more of just a show. And, and certainly, I mean, it has, you know, pumped, I think, a little bit of fear premium into the market. But in reality, I don't think much is going to be done. U.S., uh, Europe's talked about economic sanctions against Russia. But, you know, when you really think about it here, you know, Europe there, Eastern Europe gets a tremendous amount of natural gas uh, from Russia, about 30 percent. About 16 percent of that flows through the Ukraine. And so, you know, Russia, it, it, that relationship that is there, um, I don't think that that is going to be compromised. So it's just my thought. We'll see what happens there. But nonetheless, has kept a small amount of fear premium in the market. But again, I think it's ultimately going to be a non-event. And I don't think that we're really going to do anything. Uh, maybe there's some economic sanctions there, but I don't think that there'll be anything more than that. You know, moving on, you take a look at our S&P market here. Uh, we've seen a little bit of a touch of a weaker uh, weakness here so far today. And, you know, you look at that market in general, and I think it is a little bit overbought right now. Um, with the consolidation that we're seeing, there has been some weakness there. So we could start to see that come down. And if that happens, we very well could uh, see oil prices come under pressure. In addition, the U.S. dollar has been firmer, and that has a tendency to keep crude under uh, pressure as well. So, you know, summing it all up here, you take a look at the fundamentals on the market, and, and let's not forget about the current stockpile situation, which I've talked about in so many of these posts here. I think we've got ample oil. We'll see what uh, Wednesday's report looks like. But, you know, taking a look at it here, I think, you know, fundamentals right now, I think are ultimately, in my opinion, pointing here to lower prices in oil, even though we've been a touch further, a uh, touch firmer. Now, you take a look at the technical side of the picture here. And, you know, for a while there with the market consolidating, we were in a little bit of oversold territory, I think. Uh, the market kind of came down around the 200-day. Recently, the lows, the daily lows have been kind of touching on the 50-day moving average. We have seen things kind of firm up a little bit. But I think that this thing is getting ready to roll over, in my opinion. Uh, you know, I think that when you when you look at around this hundred dollar area here, uh, looking back across the charts here, that there's significant not only psychological uh, resistance up here, but some real uh, points there that this market's going to key in off of. So I think prices are going to look to start moving lower here, especially if we see another build here in the EIA data. So give me a call, shoot me an email. We can get uh, we can touch base here a little bit more about some strategies there. I've got some that I can recommend to you. Uh, if you're long the market, uh, you know we can talk about risk management strategies. If you're thinking about getting short the market. Market. I've got some ideas for you as well. So uh, be sure to uh, tune in here on Wednesday. Uh, we'll talk about the EIA data. Futures and options on futures may involve substantial risk and may not be suitable for all investors.